Hi everyone, today we're going to have a look at the centre lathe, also known sometimes as the metal lathe. I'm going to start off by going through the different parts of the lathe and the safety checks you would do to make sure that you are kept safe. This is the metal lathe or the centre lathe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the, each bit of it, but it'll be very quick. We'll also then concentrate on the steps you have to do to make sure the machine is safe before you start using it. We'll just work from left to right. My rubbish pointer has been snapped, is pointing the way. So on the left hand side here, we've got the headstock. The headstock is where the motor is that drives this around in, in circles. This is the chuck. The chuck can be set to drive at different speeds using the gear selector here. You can see it's got a low speed and high speed, and then it's got a range of speeds in each of these. Emergency stop is here, and the green light here comes on when the machine is being operated. The piece of material we're turning goes into the chuck and it's secured using a chuck key, which I'll get into in a little bit. This here is the tool stock. This holds the tools that will cut into the metal. This is a chuck to hold a drill bit and the drill bit would point that way and it drills holes in the end of the piece of metal. And this is the tail stock. The tail stock adjustment wheel means that you can make the drill bit go in and out this is the cross slide. So this cross slide adjustment wheel here, this little one, you can go around in circles with it. That makes the cross slide go in and out of the way. This is for the carriage. This is the carriage here, goes along the bed. This is the carriage adjustment wheel. This red knob is on the end of the lever that turns the machine on and off when you're operating it. Now my iPad is very heavy and my arm has got quite shaky doing this. I hope you can still see what I'm doing. Okay. On to safety check number one. To make sure that we have a safe workspace, we need to make sure it's neat and tidy. Over here, someone that's been working on the lathe previously has left tools around and drill bits and old pieces of metal. That is not safe because if there's a vibration, it falls down into the chuck, that could cause problems. We need to clear that up. Doesn't this, can't move my arm in the right direction, doesn't this look a lot better, much safer, there's no pieces going to fall into the lathe while you're working on it. The next thing we need to do to make sure that we've done our safety checks is if you're using any piece of metal, which is probably likely because it's a metal lathe, is that this piece of metal is secure in the chuck. Let's have a look. So the chuck is here. This is a three jaw chuck, self-centering. All that means is there's three jaws, one, two, three. And when you tighten it up using this here, the jaws come in together without you having to adjust them individually. What we have to do is we have to put a piece of metal into this hole here and make sure the piece of metal is long enough. Then using a chuck key, we put the chuck key into the hole, turn it righty tighty to tighten our piece of material into the chuck. Now you don't want too much sticking out if you're working on the end of the material. You get used to this and you can decide which ones, if you're gonna have it further out or further in. Tighten it up nice and tight and rule number one of using the lathe, most important rule, the chuck key has to come out. If you leave the chuck key in there, start spinning around, the chuck key can go flying through the air and hurt somebody. So we take it out every single time. The next check we're going to look at is using the guard. Now the guard is up here, the yellow piece here. And what happens is this folds down and you can hear a click there. There's a little sensor, a little micro switch. And when that clicks on, that means the machine can be started. Guard open, machine won't turn on. Guard down machine will turn on. However, I've not got my safety glasses on, so I'm going to put them on now. Just like magic, I have my safety goggles on. If you're asked about safety checks you do on the machine in an exam or a test, your safety goggles aren't on the machine, so you can't put that down as an answer. That's another thing altogether. We're concentrating on the machine today. The safety guard is down. Listen. I can now start the machine. Perfect. 
Another safety check we can do on the machine is by altering the speed. This lever here adjusts whether it's low speed or high speed, and then this lever here controls where this arrow points, and that tells you what actual speed the machine is running at. So in high speed, we can go between 460 and 2000 revs per minute, and in low speed, we can go between 70 and 300 revs per minute. We adjust this depending on things like the material we're using, the size of the piece of material we're using, and also, importantly, on the size of the finish we're using. Sorry, the type of finish we're looking for. If you want a nice, shiny finish, the higher the speed is, the better. If we're doing something called knurling, we turn the speed down low. The safety checks are necessary here because if you're working on material at the wrong speed or using a process at the wrong speed, things can break and then bits of metal can fly through the air. That's dangerous. Another safety check we can do is we can check that the tool that we're using to cut the metal is secured in the tool post. The tool post can be moved backwards and forwards, it can be moved in and out, and it can be rotated. When we're doing any of that, and then we start cutting, once it's back in position, we can start cutting. There's a lot of force goes through the tool, and if the force of the metal hits the tool and the tool's not secured, it can come loose. That's dangerous. What we do is we tighten it up using a spanner or a socket set that fits neatly over these adjusters. And the adjusters must be adjusted one end to the other to make sure that they're nice and tight. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Another safety check we can do in this area is if we're going to do any drilling, we use the tail stock, we have a chuck in it, and the drill bits, either a twist drill bit, or if you're starting off, use a centre drill bit. Centre drill, very important, it drills the centre out before you start using a normal twist drill. Make sure that that, or that, is nice and tight in the chuck. Double check this, it's very important that this is nice and secure. If it's not secure, the drill will break. If the drill breaks, you can ruin your work and it's unsafe because you can have little bits of metal. Now we're going to have a look at processes. Over here, I've got a piece of brass, which is non-ferrous metal. It's quite hard, but cuts really nicely. Um, got that in the chuck. I've got a left-hand cutting blade or cutting tool in the tool post. And the first process we're going to look at is what we call facing off. Now facing off, all that means is that we're making this face that points that way, or looks that way, we're making that nice and smooth. Because at the moment you can see it's got a bump on it and it might not be level. So first things first, before we start anything, we face off. Guard down. Make sure it's in position correctly. So if I wind my cross side adjustment wheel in a bit, I can see I'm going to miss. So I have to adjust this correctly before I start. Just using the carriage wheel to go across here and I can see that I'm ready to start cutting now, I think. check your material, you always stop the lathe first, then put the the guard up. Just looking down here, focus on that piece, you can see there that this is now nice and smooth. Let's have a look from this angle. So it's flat on the end there, isn't it? That's ready to start processing. So the next one I'm going to look at is we're going to drill a hole in the end of there so we can support the workpiece from both ends. Before I start drilling, I need to make sure I've got machine set up. So I need to move the tool post out of the way 
and adjust the tail post with the drill bit and the chuck into the correct position. Okay, you can see we are now set up ready to go. Here, there's a lock on the tail stock and I have it pushed forward and that locks this so it can't slide along the bed of the machine. That is not going to be anywhere. You can see the centre drill there, please focus. You see the centre drill is ready to drill right into the middle of the piece of material when it's turning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the tail stock adjustment wheel to move my drill bit forward into the metal while the metal is spinning around in the chuck. So guard down, this is nice and locked. I'm going to position this and the aim is to go and create a chamfer. Chamfer is a little, um, it's like 245 degree angles created by the centre drill and that means it will guide the next drill into the hole properly. So now we have this piece of metal which is held in the chuck at this end but at this end we've got this hole. Now in that hole I can find a dry a rotating centre and the rotating centre here has the same angle on the end of it that will match the hole that the centre drill has, has made therefore it can support the metal properly. Sorry I got a bit tongue twisted there. This goes away to the side now. This was the chuck, the Jacob's chuck that was used to hold the drill bit. Now, I'm going to put that safely away and I'm going to install the rotating centre or the revolving centre. It's got a taper on here and it gets grabbed onto it inside here in the tailstock. This is loose until I start winding the tailstock forward and there's a little bit of magic happens inside that means that's nice and secure now. I then slide that back up to the piece of metal Insert that into the end, lock the tail stock, lock this in place with this little lock here. That piece of metal is now supported for the next step. Now, I don't think there's enough metal protruding from the chuck here, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to adjust it so the tail stock moves that way and I'll have more material to work with. It will be supported at this end and at that end now, so this is much more rigid in the middle when it's rotating, so I can use heavier equipment like the knurling tool to do its job without any problems. Back round to this side now, you can see that we've got the three jaw chuck, the piece of metal I'm going to be working on, and we've got the rotating centre here. And if you look closely, you can see the angle going and disappearing into the chamfered angle I was talking about before. And the next job that I'm going to tell you about is when we're going to do some parallel turning. Now parallel we know is when we have one line that runs along beside another line and they never get closer together and they never get further apart. So if I enter this here, this would be parallel to my piece of metal. So this tool piece I've got here, just a general purpose left hand tool, is going to be run along the metal in a parallel motion. What I'm going to have to do, I'm going to use the cross slide adjustment wheel to move the tool towards the metal until it's ready to cut. Then I'm going to use the carriage adjustment wheel down here to move the tool post along the piece of metal. So 
I'm not parallel turning yet, I'm just moving the tool into position. It's now at the depth I would like to cut, so I'm using the carriage adjustment slide. And this is now parallel turning. You can see I'm moving the tool slowly along the piece of metal and it's taking a little bit off. Now this piece of brass has been bent a little bit so it's stopped taking it off now because it's got to a certain point. I'm now going to return to the start. I'm going to continue. So you're about to see some parallel turning. Okay, I'm going to use the speed control and I'm going to increase the speed of the lathe. So what I mean by that is the rotating speed of the metal is going to increase. That will give me a better surface finish. So the pointer is now at 2000 because I'm in high gear. That means it will be spinning at 2000 revs per minute. So here I have positioned the tool back in place. I'm going to do another cut along the length. This is still parallel turning. I'm just improving the surface finish. So if you look here now, you can see that I've increased the surface finish along the piece of metal I've been turning. It's a much shinier finish now because I increased the speed and the feed rate going along the way was quite slow. On to the next process. So the next process we're going to learn about is knurling. Knurling is using this knurling tool and the piece of metal will sit in between these little formers. The formers rotate when the piece of metal rolls around and they leave the pattern, which is a combination of both formers leaving their mark on the metal. What I've had to do is the lathe has been set into low gear and it is now down at 70 RPM. So if I move over, I've got, I think I need to straighten this up a, a bit before I start. So I'll just do that now. So now we're going to see the knurling process. I have to make sure that I have the matching grips. You see this knurling tool is a combination tool, so you can have different depths of um, knurling left on the piece of metal. So I'm gonna put this one just around here. Then I move it forward until it's just in place, touching the metal. Now I don't want a lot of force to start with. I then start the machine. I use the cross slide adjustment wheel to push the knurling tool into the, the brass metal on this occasion. Then I'm going to use the cross slide adjustment wheel, the compound, sorry, slide adjustment wheel to move the knurling tool along the metal at a slow rate, giving the pattern the chance to leave its mark on the metal. I think I've gone far enough for this demonstration now, but you can see that the mark is still being left on the metal there. When I stop the machine, you can see that we've got a beautiful pattern left in the surface of the brass. Now this pattern would be used for um, 
products where we need to have some grip or maybe it's an aesthetic quality we want to have on the surface. I just put two little grooves into the metal on either side of the knurling. Now I need to change the tool. Now you can see this tool supported on the tool post by different levels of thickness of steel. So if I take the tool off, you can see those are still there. Now, another safety check you can do on your lathe is to make sure that the tool height is correct. So the tool height has to match so when contact is made, it's exactly halfway up the piece of metal so it's cutting safely. I'm just finishing installing this parting tool and we'll use that in a second to do some parting off. But you can see that the tool tip is halfway up the piece of metal. So now I need to tighten this into place using my spanner. And again, I'm going to chase this along so as just do it loosely by hand and then nip it up with the spanner. And you can see down here that these bolts are holding the tool into place on the tool post. I'm now going to do some parting off here. I'm going to move the parting tool across the material to cut through it. What I need to do to start off with is I'll leave the rotating centre in place to support my metal. Then when I'm part of the way through, I'll remove that and then take off the remainder. I now have a groove in the piece of metal there. Sorry, I just focused in there. So you can see the shape that the parting tool leaves. You'll notice I've moved the piece of metal closer into the chuck. And now what I can do, I can use the parting tool to get rid of that material on the end there. Not with the guard up, I can't. That was a good demonstration of how that safety feature there. of metal. Now the advantage that we have with a centre lathe of doing this is that on here you can see we've got a guide, we've got a gauge mark there that tells us how far in to the metal we have drilled. So I'll go ahead, change the drill bit over now and then we'll drill to the correct depth. Using the centre drill, that's left us a nice chamfered hole there. That means that this drill bit, the twist drill bit, will be guided in to the centre of the piece of metal we're drilling and therefore it is safe and the drill bit will not snap. 
The other good thing about that is when you're trying to drill a rotating piece of metal, the center drill is a really stubby drill so it can't bend. This one could bend. So what happens is if we haven't done the center drill and it just goes against a flat face, it can wander about in the flat face and snap. We don't want that. So this is good the way I've done it. I'm going to start drilling now. So there's my gauge. Let's move it up to zero where it's touching the piece of metal over here. I'm just over 1.5 inches on this machine. Sorry if I actually aim the camera at the correct place. I can see I've got a gauge there, then below it's in millimetres as well. So I'm at 30 millimetres, 30, 40 millimetres. If I want to drill 10 millimetres deep blind hole, I'd make that go to 50. So let's do that now. What I go is I go in a bit and then I come back a bit to let the waist out, in, then out, and then that's me at 50 just now. So I'm going to stop that there. That means my hole over here is 10 millimeters deep. Let's take that out. You see the drill bit coming out. So that's me done a 10 millimeter deep blind hole. I can now remove my piece of metal. I would just part it off across here. But you've seen parting off, so I won't show you that again at the moment because I don't have the tool in place. So now I've finished manufacturing this piece of metal. We can have a quick look at it and then we'll just summarize what we've been doing. Take the chuck key out always. If you leave the chuck key in, it can cause problems for somebody else when you turn it on and it goes flying across the room. So here you can see that we've got this piece of metal here and it's knurled using a knurling tool. We faced it off just using a general purpose right left-handed tool, sorry. We did some parallel turning. Parallel is moving this way parting off is cutting across the way. We've done some drilling where we use the centre drill to start with and then went in with a normal twist drill afterwards. We did our safety checks on the machine beforehand and remember the safety checks of the machine are the ones that are on the actual machine. Wearing your safety glasses and making sure you don't have any loose clothing is not a check on the machine. The checks on the machine are on the machine. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you've learned something from this and we'll do another one on wood turning next.